Hey traders from around the world, it's your boy Jeremy Alexander Newsom with reallifetrading.com. I hope you're doing amazing. Fridays, we have a new and exceptionally exciting event that I will be doing every single Friday where I take some trades that you have submitted to me and I review them. I look at the good, the bad, the ugly. So these are not my trades. This is a trade that someone else out there in the real life trading community has taken and placed. And I review it, talk about what was good, what was bad, what could have been better. And in doing so, I think that we will all gain a lot of knowledge and pick up some incredible tidbits on how we can improve our own trading. All right, so let's dive in. Let's go look at a setup and a trade that a trader sent me and we'll talk about it, discuss it, dive into it. And we will be doing these every single Friday. I'll see you next Monday for another real life stock review. You rock. Bye. All right, traders, per that discussion, we're here to analyze a trade done by my good buddy, Michael Ramsey. So, Michael, thank you for sharing this setup and analysis with me. I really appreciate you letting us all learn and grow from this particular trade. So we're going to walk you through kind of what Mr. Ramsey did and thought about and planned, and then we'll kind of take it from there. So this particular trade, we'll go through a few things. Number one, we'll go back in time and kind of look at what he was looking at. So this is the gap on Etsy. This is back in March. So the gap actually occurred on the 26th of February. Very strong bullish gap and go, and the trend is exceptionally bullish. So first off, this comes down to a very normal thing that I see traders do all the time. They try to pick the top. And they might not necessarily buy puts at the exact high, but they wait for some information. So he, uh, Michael didn't buy puts here. He waited for a little bit more information, a little bit more candles to come in. But a lot of traders will try to pick the top in a trend because they quote unquote know that the trend or the trade is going to pull back or reverse, right? They know that it's about to do that. And I'm not saying it can't happen. I'm not saying it won't happen. But what I am saying is it's very easy, in my personal opinion, to just simply go with the trend. So rather than try to pick the top and use one piece of data or one candlestick or one gap, that might give you a little bit of insight in when the pullback is going to happen. Use everything else that's already in your favor. You got volume, you got the moving averages, you got the gap, you got a bullish trend, so you know to be bullish, you know where to go bullish. So going bearish just doesn't have that great of a risk reward ratio. So realistically, if you're looking at going long, you're probably looking at going long somewhere down here, and it's just an easier trade to wait for. All right, so here's the next candle. This is when Mr. Michael gets in bearish with some 75 puts. So 75 March puts. He bought those puts at $7 and he put his stop loss at $5. So the first thing about that is number one, he's buying an in the money option, which is a good thing. So if you're going to play something bearish, right, 75, that's a nice deep in the money option and it looks really good. Here's the challenge though with this particular trade. I do agree that it's bearish and I do agree that it likely will pull back down into these averages at some point. But what's happening is when you get this rotation, this is the S curve on a smaller time frame. And it should bounce from here a little bit so if you zoom into the hourly chart which we won't do right now but on the hourly chart this is probably the pullback to the 50 ema so there are some people going long on this trade so if you're looking at going bearish if you're looking at going counter trend this is a trade that i will do very rarely i take about three counter trend trades every four months it's pretty rare. Now, I'm not talking about day trading. I'm talking about swing trading. I'm talking about getting into a swing trade, and I will show you my last counter trend trade and how I played it. But I only do about three every four months. It's relatively rare. 
So what I'm trying to elaborate on is once that candle comes in, you most likely have an idea that it's going to get a little bit of a bounce off the hourly chart. So what you're expecting is on the hourly chart something like this, and then if that failure happens, that's when you actually get the breakdown. That's when you get that actual move. So for me, if I was going to go bearish, I love this bearish volume. I like how the bearish volume is more than the bullish volume. Personally, I'm still looking at going long. However, I would zoom into the hourly chart. And with the size of this candle, right, this is the biggest one-day candle on Etsy in a while. I mean, this is a big candle. So the open, let's say the high and the low. The high and the low is pretty much seven points. So we're talking about a big candle. 73.35 minus 66.95. That's about, yeah, right at seven points. This candle, 64.25, 69.50. So that is about five and some change. So this is a, a very large candle. So what happens with large candles? Well, as I mentioned in a few classes and videos, one of the things that happens in large candles is you often get a retracement. You get a pullback of about 50% of that candle before it's going to continue in that direction. So again, I realize all this is hindsight and all of these reviews will be in hindsight, but we can use our information that we extrapolate from our previous trades and use that to take away what we can do in the past, or sorry, in the future, learning from the past. So again, I did not do this trade, and I will always mention if there's a trade that I did not do, and all of these probably pretty much will be trades I didn't do. But I would look to get in bearish on a pullback about halfway into this candle. So bearish limit buy, and I would go with the 75 puts, and I would go with March. I think that part was actually all done correctly. I think the strike price was done, and I think the expiration was done correctly. It was just Michael got in on this candle rather than waited for it to close and then get it on a pullback. Had Michael got in at 5 with a stop at 3, I believe this trade would have worked out exceptionally well. So the next candle, there's the retest right there. So that's the bounce on the hourly. Next candle, a little bit of a higher high. Next candle, that's the candle right there. This is called a trapping candle. So there's a lot of information on this candle. Notice, first of all, that you got the S curve. Boom, boom, boom. And it was almost bouncing off the 10. Wasn't quite. So what that means is people were going bullish right here, expecting Etsy to S curve and bounce higher. So you had that. Number two, you had the people who got in bearish and who had a stop loss right there. They also got trapped. So once they got trapped, Michael, I'm assuming this is when you got stopped out on this trade was March the 7th on that upper shadow. Now, again, getting stopped out there, the challenge with this now becomes, well, if I get in short here, I'm getting short in right at the 10 EMA. Now, this is a support level of which, now that everyone's trapped, we could easily bounce higher. Which I won't specifically argue that. That's the downside to trading counter trend. So the next candle that comes in was a gap down, and notice what it does. It gaps down right into the 20 EMA, right below the low of this bullish candle. And that would have been a great spot to get in long, and I would pretty much exit the very next day. Because you got to consider, you got in at 63 and some change. This is a massive bullish candle. And this candle is so big, in fact, that I can almost guarantee that we're going to retrace halfway into this candle at some point. So since I'm taking a blind trade, just buying it off of a limit buy, getting in as low as I possibly can, right below the low of this candle, getting in, getting out, I'm just going to go ahead and take my trade and move on. So on this day, on this candle, I'm out, fully out of the bullish trade, and I'm waiting for a retest. So I'm going to wait, I'm going to wait, I'm going to wait, and right around here, I'll start considering going long, because we're now retesting halfway into this candle, so for a long trade. So I hope that kind of helps. I hope that makes sense as far as trading counter trends. 
You'll notice what it actually ended up doing again on Etsy to create that lower high is we did actually have one huge candle, two big candles, three candles in a row. It makes a new high. This is the price that a lot of people get in bullish, okay, because they want to wait for the breakout. So they get in bullish at 71.96 and then they get trapped because they waited too long to get into the trade. You already had four, well, three strong bullish moves in a row and then the pop higher. This is the price that I, if I was still in that trade, would be selling. I would have gotten out of everything on March the 11th out of my long position. So with that being said, let me go show you the last counter trend trade that I did play. And this was on iRobot, and I took it very similarly. So on iRobot, this was uh, right here. Counter trend trade, bearish candle, big bearish candle, closed below support. You have a rest after battle candle pattern right there. And a lot of people are going to wait to get in bearish below this low. The thing is, you already have a one black crow candle right here. So it's a very strong candle. You already have a close below this bullish candle. You already have a lower high. And this candle here closes below all moving averages. Closes below the 10, closes below the 20. You have a lower high. Volume on this candle increases relative to the last two days. And you don't have a lot stopping you between where you are now and the 50 EMA. So using the exact same information I just talked about on Michael's trade, what I did with this particular trade is I got in bearish on a pullback here. So I did a limit buy. So if you're going to get into shares, you could have sold short there. Or if you want to buy options, you're going to get in on a pullback. And you have it again right about the 20 EMA. So big candle, looking for it to retrace about 50% and then maybe roll over. I don't know if it's going to roll over or not, but I'm going to take the trade and we'll see. So this candle right here, as I just mentioned, most people got in bearish here. And I'm not saying any real life traders. I'm just saying other people out there on the internet got in bearish there. I got in bearish on the pullback because I recognized the size of that bearish candle and I recognized, well, it did that just three days ago where you had a big bearish candle and then it retested, so let me do it again. So we got triggered in on that day. The next candle, a little bit of a gap up, still kind of break even, not losing on the trade. And the very next day, check it out. Exactly the same type of sentiment. A little bit of an upper shadow just to make sure people got trapped right there. So you had some bulls that got trapped right there. You had some bears who most likely got in bearish on this day, put their stop above this candle, they got stopped out. So that is your trapping candle, exactly like we just talked about on Etsy. That is your trapping candle. Huge volume coming in. I'm exiting right here. Even though we did not hit the 50 EMA, based on this volume alone and the fact that we're up a little bit more than an R, barely, I'm going to take my profit on that trade and I'm going to be done and I'm going to walk away. And that's exactly what we did on that bearish counter trend trade on iRobot. And that really was pretty much the low from there. And then obviously it gaps down on earnings. So anyway, I hope this is helpful. I'll be doing another one next Friday. I'm excited to see which trader we pick and what trade we analyze together. Feel free to put in any stocks that you want me to look at in Monday's Real Life Stock Review. And until then, love life, live life, and trade it. You rock. Bye.